This one might get me in trouble, but I don't care anymore. Welcome to Popcorn Planet. I am Andy Signor, and I just see a trend happening online that's annoying me. And I brought in Steph to help me here. Hey, Steph, how are you doing? Hey, yo, Pandy, I'm not doing too bad. Oh, I like, I like that set behind you. It looks so familiar. Wow, crazy. Ooh, I know, right? <laughs> Well, uh, thank you for being here on this one. It's, I, I feel like it's, I don't know, I'm like even nervous sometimes to talk about things because there's certain topics we're not supposed to criticize or talk about. But I wanted to talk about this. And I was talking to you and you said, you know what? You're right. We should talk about this. Let's make a video. All right. So look, Demi Lovato recently made the news. She came out as uh, non-binary. Uh, sorry, they came out as non-binary, preferred pronouns of they, them. I don't want to get into that, what that means. I know some people in my audience are going to get frustrated. That's not what this video is about. Good for Demi Lovato. Live your life. Be happy. The other part of the story is Prince Harry, who's trending today, who also just dropped a Apple Plus series about mental health. Uh, both of these instances rubbed me the wrong way because these personal announcements, these big life-changing things and sort of rev revelations, as they were announced, launched new series. And that's where I really have a problem with this. I, I want to break this down for you. So let's start. I want to talk about Demi. I want to talk about Prince Harry. But let's start with Prince Harry because he's the one who's trending today. So, and, and Steph, I know you can help me on this one because Prince Harry did his Oprah interview a ways back. And it, it, as someone from England, it, it really made a, a, a major fuss. And I know you're upset with him because he sort of lived off of this, you know, thing. Granted, it wasn't always easy for him, but he took the benefits. He took the money. Uh, which the English people really paid for. Uh, and he now has come out and sort of just stuck his middle finger up and said, you know, uh, all these issues he's had. He did this Oprah interview. And in that Oprah interview, he made a point to sort of just say, look, I don't want to keep doing this. I want privacy. I just wanted to do this interview. And then I'm done talking about it is what I specifically. Do you remember him saying that specifically? It was something along those lines of I want to talk about this and then I'm done. Didn't, didn't he say something like that? Yes. <laughs> Good. I'm not crazy. So. Uh, to hear now that his new show about mental health and on Apple Plus, his three-part series, is literally about him ripping into the royal family and the total neglect and everything else and how Meghan and all, all the stuff the royal family did to him, him and Meghan. I'm sorry, this really rubbed me the wrong way. Now, look, if he had done this in an interview and he wasn't profiting on this, it's one thing, but he literally did that Oprah interview, it feels like to me, to basically do a backdoor pilot to then get Apple to pay, well, if you like that big Oprah interview, we got a whole series of me dumping on the royal family. And, and it's like, look, the dude can do whatever he wants, but then don't say you were done and you want privacy. You were egging this on. You're making it worse. You are now profiting off of this misery, which, you know, it is what it is. But I, the, hip, the hypocrisy here is so off the charts for me. And I also just, I can't take him as seriously now knowing that he's doing all this for Apple money. Apple money pays a lot, guys. He was out there selling to Spotify, anyone he could to sort of buy new projects. And I assumed he was just going to go do cool creative projects. But no, he's created a drama channel on Apple TV. This is a millionaire who's made millions during the British right, stuff. And now he's literally created a drama channel to bitch about his past. And he's getting paid to do it by, by Apple, which is like way huge money. Steph, this has to rub you the wrong way as well. Am I crazy in sort of in how I'm seeing this? Or what, what is your two cents on this Harry portion of it? Um, you, you're not crazy at all, really. Um, it's, it's a case of, it, it goes back to what I've said previously. Prince Harry and Meghan left the royal family to have privacy, to not have that spotlight glaring on them from the media, this, that and the other. But then you're coming out with all this malarkey when it comes to royal family and it's like, Dude, this is frustrating. You you either want the attention or you don't. And when you do then want the attention, it's a case of, well, hang on a minute. You're doing it in a way that you're now profiting from it. Like, dude, this you're talking about real family issues here that should really be private it should really be on the world stage here you should be sorting it out with your dad your grandma all that lot regardless of okay the prince <laughs> it's, it's, it's prince charles and the queen but you know you should be doing it behind the scenes why are you dragging them like this on the world stage it's ridiculous 
I, I'm with you. And I, I, look, to anybody who's like, well, Andy, he's allowed to talk about it once. He is. And he's allowed to sell. He's allowed to do all these things, but I don't have to then believe him. Like, that's the difference here. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and that's where the line comes. If he wants, if he's had a problem and he wants to come forward and speak what happened and expose them, it's his right as a person. However, he's playing the victim in all this while profiting. And that's where things are a little scripted. And, and it's like sometimes stuff like people write a book. And, I, and it's sort of like I feel like that's, the, that's one way where you're like, okay, you wrote your book. You want to get your piece out and, you know, you get paid for the book. I understand that to tell all the memoirs you do that. That's like one piece where I sort of am like feels like a professional way to do it. However, to like immediately jump into like our which streaming service wants me to get my to just keep bitching about my family and get pay me millions of dollars it doesn't make me want to believe or root for him in a way and i, I want to pivot to the second portion of this because it's, it, it, again this to me is a trend uh now to, uh, the other big news that dropped today was demi lovato now demi lovato came out uh at, to say uh i, I want to read uh, demi's words directly there's a video here uh but demi to, to, to quote demi I want to take this moment to share something very personal with you. Indeed, very personal, Vado said. Uh, this past year and a half, I've been doing some healing and self-reflective work. And through this work, I've had this revelation that I identify as non-binary. I'll officially be changing my pronouns to they, them. I feel this best represents the fluidity I feel in my gender expression and allows me to feel most authentic and true to the person I both know I am and still am discovering. Now, again... I know some people have an issue with this whole issue. That's not what I want to get lost in the weeds on. I believe this is a serious issue for people. I believe there's gender dysmorphia. Like I understand there are a lot of people who struggle with gender identity. It's a real thing that's plagued people for, for a really long time. However, right now, for Demi Lovato to do that, I, I, I paused for a second. And then when I saw that she did it by launching a podcast series, she announced this while announcing her podcast series 4D with Demi Lovato, which is what this is a promo for. Let's, let's be honest. She decided to reveal this big personal moment for her to then launch a podcast where she'll talk about it in depth. Now, some of you are probably saying, well, who cares, Andy? Yeah, that's ever. I got a problem with it. To me, this is a serious issue that plagues a lot of people, and, they, and I, I do believe it's an issue. And I believe when someone like Demi Lovato comes out, this starts to feel... And I, and I don't, I don't want to feel this way, Steph. I'm not trying to criticize. I want to believe her. I want to support her. They, I want to support them. Apologies. See, I'm, I'm trying my best to respect. I want to support them. However, it does start to feel a little attention-seeking when you're doing it for profit. When you're doing this private announcement that is a huge personal choice and, and, and a revelation that is should be a very brave and big moment you're doing to then announce it's part of your series to discuss and further and bring people and start talking. To me, that's when I'm lost because you're profiting on this. And anybody who's like saying, well, Andy, no, no. Audible struck multi-project podcast deal with OBB Sounds, that scripted horror series with Glowing, blah, blah, blah. This is where this came from. Division of Demi Lovato's the, the producer OBB Me- Media. So this is a, a a project now. If you go, and I even have it here, Steph, because I don't want people to say, Andy, what are you talking about? So here's a, if you listen to the end of her podcast, their podcast. Listen to this presentation of OBB Sound, SB Projects, and Cadence 13. 4D with Demi Lovato is hosted and executive produced by me. This goes Demi on Lovato. for about five minutes. Executive produced Listing by Michael the executive producers, the Scott associate Ratner, producers, Elias the sound Tenney, engineers, the Steve editors, Ron, all Scott the production Benson, companies behind Shen, it, the people belong Jen involved. Daniels. To tell me that there's not money being made on this podcast would be an absolute lie. You're being a, you're, you're crazy to say that this isn't for profit. And so that's when I have a problem. Are you donating the profits to to to, to, to worthy causes of people who help you know help people with this issue? I'm guessing not. I'm guessing, you know, they're not. And, and when you go deeper and you, and you see who these companies involved are, SBB, uh, what they, this is a, a Scooter Bronze production company. Our mission to say, you know, basically that's who reps uh, uh, Demi and that's who's making it. And then you got another one, this is Codens 13. They, we sell and produce the top pod, premium top podcasts around town. These, you know, and these are, these are shows you've heard of. Uh, these, these celebrities now are going and getting paid to then have, have podcasts go out there and sell, but you need a hook. And so my problem is, are you using this as a hook to have sold your podcast, Emmy? Because I can see why people would criticize you for that. It feels like not the right time to do that. Maybe let it, you know, announce it, let it sit, 
get the reaction from the people, and then become an expert. And then you know what? I've been so inspired. I wanted. I wanted to do. It. Maybe then you know, Steph, I'd give her a little bit more of a pass. But do, are, are you with me in sort of seeing sort of the the timing of this as sus? <laughs> is I guess as the kids would say it now to to use among us. Do, do you do? You, am I overthinking this one, Steph, or do you notice now another example of a celebrity using a struggle, using a real issue to profit mm-hmm. from, which then in turn makes them seem kind of phony. This is the thing. With the making these announcements, whether it's Prince Harry with his struggles with the family, the royal family, or Demi Lovato with her identity and her announcing herself herself as non-binary as them and they, okay, that's always going to be attention-seeking in itself because they're wanting to bring attention to um, identity when it comes to Demi Lovato um, and, and the issues that could come around with that and, and the discrimination and all that. Well, fair enough. Uh, with Prince Harry, he, he's trying to do it under mental health and bring attention to that. That kind of attention-seeking is good. Fair enough. I can't fault them for that. Where it starts getting really, really icky for me is when they're using these announcements, they're using these statements to actually make money off of it. Because it's like, okay, then, well, what's your real intention? Is your real intention actually to do something that's good, honourable and virtuous and lay a light on these issues that are issues and that do need to be dealt with? Or... Is, is that secondary and you're just chasing the dollar and, and you're just wanting to make money? And it just seems to me that the way that they're doing it, the timing is sus. It is very suspect for the both of them. Um, and to me, it's just they're using their struggles to make money rather than using their struggles to actually shine a proper light on the issues to try and help the world. It's more for selfish reasons, the way that I see it. Yep. Well, here I want to add one more because this is a trend. It's an ongoing trend, and I want to get your thoughts, audience, because I'm here. But uh, The Bachelor. Do you guys remember when Colton Underwood came out as the first gay Bachelor? Well, it was was about a minute later he announced that he had been filming his own reality show for Netflix about him coming out. All calculated. Good Morning America. ABC owns it. All the, all of this, and, and this one has sparked backlash. People are frustrated by this. Granted, it's you know there's even a. a, a, a uh, change.org to sort of stop it. Uh, th- they're upset because of the way he treated his ex-girlfriend, et cetera. But still, I- I'm sorry. Again, sus. Like, what? what is your intention exactly, Steph? What is the reason? Because some might say, well, no, they're going to use these shows as a way to help and inspire others. And I guess that's, a, that's an argument one could make. Uh, but I don't know. These, these decisions feel very personal. And to start, I, I don't want to keep seeing this trend continue of announcing such big things such private things that honestly, why are they our business? Like, like live your life and it is what it is. But like, why do we, I don't understand why we need to know everyone's sexual identity. Like why, why is that? Why is that such an important thing for people to know? Well, well, who do you sleep with? It shouldn't matter. It shouldn't be any of our business. And, and to use these sort of things, these private moments uh, that all these people are doing here, continually to do to then launch shows at streaming platforms to make millions on, when they're already millionaires, I, I don't know. I, I really do think it sadly makes their plight, their struggle, seem kind of phony. It makes them seem kind of fake to me. And, and I, I can see why there's frustration online. It doesn't help the cause for the people who actually are struggling because they chose to do so but to profit while doing so. Like, mm. P, I, I want to share an example because I don't want to just keep calling people out. Here's, here's someone I actually genuinely believe in support of and try my best to make sure I encourage. Elliot Page. Elliot Page... The actor now has a past in a, as a previous identity. Most people, you know, identified Elliot as. And you can see the struggle in a way. You know what I mean, Steph? Like in, in watching mm-hmm. the movies and sort of interviews, it, it just it seems clear that Elliot Page genuinely, you know, was struggling with gender identity. I, I really do believe it. And I support that the way Elliot came forward, I've made a very at- point. And I always, I will do it for all these people. I don't want to, I'm not trying to be against or a bully or, or, or mean. I just, but Elliot Page is a perfect example of like, I don't see Elliot trying to make a profit off of it right now. Elliot's mm-hmm. going to do causes and it's, it's important to them and it's like it, it, him. And, and I genuinely think that's an example where, yeah, you know what? Go Elliot. Good for you. Like that is a inspiring story that I believe I, I didn't see anything in there that made me think this is sus what's going on. But then you go and you look at Demi Lovato and I'm sorry, Demi, 
are you the expert on this subject? Do you really feel like you should be the poster child for this right now? I I like Demi Lovato. I I don't have a problem, but Demi Lovato has gone through a lot of struggles. I hope Demi is happy, healthy, sober, all these things that she's shared with us. I, I, I wish her nothing but the best them, nothing but the best. Uh, but I, I don't know the way you present this as the launch of your 4d podcast to help us all go to the fourth dimension with you. It, it just, it rubs me the wrong way. It, it just feels like it's not as genuine as it should be for such a monumentous and important announcement that we're all learning and trying to be educated on. So personally, I don't want to listen to your podcast to learn from you because I don't feel like you really know. And I don't know if I genuinely believe you're there. You, you figured yourself out or what you want to do. Cause you've pretty much, you admitted it in your own uh, sort of uh, you know, uh, uh, thing about it. So look, I, I'm curious what you guys at home think. Uh, is this, do you, have you been noticing this too? It's like, I don't want to, seem like I'm against people coming forward or gender identity or any of this stuff. That's not what it's about. It's the connection of, okay, when you come forward with an announcement like this, are you doing this because you think it's a trend? Or are you doing this because it's real? Or is there a little bit of both and maybe you should be careful to not launch a show on the backs of doing it? You know what I mean? Because that's going to make us not believe you and maybe you are being genuine. Maybe Demi Lovato is trying to be genuine. But uh, that's that's really what I wanted to talk about here because I'm seeing this and it's bugging me. Uh, final words from you, Steph, on this topic or any of these three examples? Yeah, so I, I echo everything that you said. I don't, it, I, them coming out and saying what they're saying, it, it isn't necessarily the issue here. Fine, Demi Lovato's non binary. Demi is them, they. Okay. Prince Harry uh, has had issues with his family shining a light on mental health. Okay, fine, whatever. But it's the intentions behind it as to why they are putting this in the public space is where now I'm feeling a little bit icky on. And it sounds like they're doing it just to launch shows and make more money. I mean, they're already gazillionaires. You know, let's not break any bones about it. You know, it just reminds me, going back a couple of years to um, Kevin Spacey, when he was going through all those legal troubles, and I'm not going to say anything more because we don't want YouTube to ding, but (laughs) you, you guys will know what I'm talking about here. And he announced in the middle of it all, that he was a gay man. Mm -hmm. Why did he do that? Again, it comes back to my point of where, what's the intent of why they're making these big personal declarations about their life? Are they doing it for the right reasons? Are they doing it to make money? Are they doing it to misdirect uh, away from what the issue actually is? And this is where it starts getting into murky waters and going back to Prince Harry and Demi Lovato. I feel we're in murky waters here and I don't, I'm not entirely on board with their intentions here as to why they're making these statements. Right. And, and just to echo, let's full, tell the full story. Go look up the, the controversy Demi Lovato was recently stuck in about the yogurt shop and everything else that, that she sort of bullied that, that shop. Again, Guys, timing is everything in Hollywood. Hollywood is a bunch of phonies. That is a fact. We all know it. But exactly, what's the intent and the timing? And when, when a celebrity is so daft to not even understand, maybe this doesn't look good to do this announcement and then on the heels of a Scooter bon- Braun produced million dollar uh, <laughs> audible sold podcast. Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe we are going to have a little bit of struggle with you, Demi, and not and maybe isn't it actually good for the community? So the problem is though we're all afraid to have these talks because if we criticize Demi Lovato for this and we don't declare her brave immediately, we are anti, and that's that's also the big problem of the society we live in where we can't have these open conversations. So Steph, I'm grateful that you were here to have these conversations with me. Uh, as always, please if you want to support me, support my friend Steph. Go to Steph the Alternator. Go subscribe. She just started her own channel. So happy to support her and help there. Uh, And if you haven't subscribed here, what are you waiting for? We're not afraid to tell you the real opinions that we share. Hit that bell for all alerts. Smash that like button and leave your comment on this discussion. I want to hear it. I'll be in there. Steph and I will probably be in there engaging with you in the comments. So stay tuned for more here on Popcorn Planet. Thanks so much for watching. Click on some of these as well. Appreciate all you guys. Have a good one.